I'm guessing this one isn't actually about raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. And yes, I had to Google that reference because along with G.I. Joe backstories and the Bible, I'm also not terribly familiar with whatever it is that song is from. Also, like those other things, I don't really care all that much. This one opens at a fancy hotel somewhere in Europe. Those accents certainly aren't giving us any clues as to anything more specific than that. A battle android trooper emerges from his hiding spot inside a suit of armor and steals a painting of Rasputin. And while it's not immediately clear how this will assist Cobra in ruling the world, it's hardly the dumbest thing they've ever had someone steal. The bat delivers the painting but misses the plane and is forced to walk home, which is kind of a shitty thing to do to a guy, but I guess he's a robot who doesn't feel feelings, so I guess I'm just projecting when I hear this. Apparently, Serpentor is collecting a bat cave level treasure room filled with relics from his assorted DNA dads. Before I can even make a joke about how this is not an improvement over Cobra Commander's assorted schemes, old Snakeface shows up to say that himself, and I realize just how much I've missed that screechy bastard so far this season. Also, I guess Serpentor is hoping to audition for Mustache Squad because check out that sweet stash. Oh, now his face is cycling through his various DNA donors. For some reason. For my power to be complete, I must gather all of my favorite things. But he can never truly be happy until he finds his teddy bear, Bobo. Seriously though, can you do a global treasure hunt on this show in a non-five-part episode? How would that even work? Naturally, one of the things they need, a Viking battle axe, happens to be located in the same place where the Joes just happen to be hanging out. The Cobras flood the city, so all the dumb fighting happens underwater, which is just as thrilling as a normal fight, except everyone strums their lips while they're talking. Serpentor himself is even here with his own scuba gear, as if that whole ensemble wasn't already a huge mess. Still not getting why his face keeps changing, but I guess that whole build him with DNA plan was already basically sorcery, so now we're just gonna abandon all pretense of science altogether. During the fighting, Pentor's magic axe is wrecked by an underwater guillotine. Oh, you gotta watch out for those. And he loses a little bit of the new powers he's been inexplicably gaining. Back at headquarters, the Joes are actually doing a pretty decent job piecing together Serpentor's changing faces and correlating that with his next likely target. Either they got a lot smarter since the Arise Serpentor Arise miniseries, or... Oh... No sign of General Hawk or Sergeant Slaughter. Kind of a weird coincidence that everyone turns into way better fighters and problem solvers under those conditions. Then again, Dial Tone has to explain who Vlad the Impaler is to everyone, despite the fact that a few people in this room actually spent the night sealed up inside the man's actual crypt. Also, this time we're abandoning any pretense of tying this to real history, and instead of Vlad Tepes, they just revert to calling him Dracula. Those two educational consultants are sleeping on the damn job again, I guess. More fighting, and... Last time we had an episode with Leatherneck, I pointed out how they actually kind of write him like a real Marine. In this episode, he won't shut up about how much better the Marines are than everyone else, which still actually tracks. Marines are like people from New York in this regard. Observational comedy! During the fight, Serpentor makes a huge deal out of this dart he has, filled with the most dangerous venom on the planet, his own blood. Then he tosses it harmlessly into the door that the Joes open to run away. You guys couldn't have nabbed the DNA of one competent dart player during all your weird genetic scavenger hunting? But then Leatherneck pushes his back into the door while they're on the other side and gets jabbed with it anyway. So I guess the ends justify the means, but there is no possible way Serpentor could have actually planned this. And actually, as much as I mock the whole Leatherneck as a Marine thing. Honestly, I mock everything. Have you not seen one of these reviews before? I actually really like the friendly rivalry between him and Deep Six. They both like to bicker about whose team is best, but they also actually care about each other and work pretty well together. I cannot deny that some of the interpersonal dynamics on the Joe team are kind of well thought out and well executed, though I'd still rather our main focus be on the Cobra team and their leader's constantly changing facial hair situation. Next, the Cobras visit the temple of some Indian snake god, which I'm sure I would have remembered from Dr. Mindbender's DNA shopping list, but I think they did throw in a hand wavy also others in that episode. So, fine. They're here to collect a giant snake that he remembers from 5,000 years ago, which is still alive and significantly more giant now. Wetsuit is in hot pursuit because the Joes need a sample of Serpentor's blood to create an antidote to cure Leatherneck. Serpentor climbs on the back of his surprisingly docile pet, which fully activates his power as promised. Also, Cobra Commander is scared of an actual giant cobra, which come on! Then Serpentor pulls a reverse St. Patrick and summons a bunch of snakes and then enjoys a cool glass of delicious snake venom. Conveniently, this is the pure form of the thing the Joes need, so when he just carelessly leaves the cup behind, they snatch it. But then Wetsuit inexplicably hurls the cup at a bat, so now they have to go milk a snake for some more. Well, not 
milk a snake. You know what I mean. There's also some decent character stuff between Wetsuit and Lifeline, as the pacifist shames the big bad Navy SEAL into overcoming his fear to be a hero. Lifeline even sort of shrugs when Wetsuit pulls out a grenade to toss at Cobra. Like, hey, I know this violates every principle I hold dear, but ah, what the hell, you've earned it, buddy. There's nothing like a good explosion, is there? Like, uh... Nothing except get your friends home alive. Well, those two things are nothing alike. The Joes make it back in time to save Leatherneck, and Cobra's been defeated, but Serpentor has an egg with a baby snake in it, which I guess is meant to mean something good for Cobra? 